Hi, it's Bob here from Insidium. This week, we're going to be jumping into Mesh Tools and having a look at the brilliant Mesh Tools Fractal. We'll be using it in its tree mode and utilizing multi-instance support to create a really polygon heavy bit of uh, geometry which we can animate smoothly and quickly in the viewport for a pretty stunning look. So let's get started and we'll jump in. In our scene then we have a default mesh tools fractal with a scene cube as the child. If you just switch off the fractal you'll see that the cube we've made nice and tall activate the mesh tools fractal and it creates these copies of the cube at different steps. This is step one, step two and step three. By default, the core shape is set to tree. We'll leave it on tree. There's loads of other core shapes that you can explore that will give you different patterns, but we're going to leave it on tree. Let's put the clone type on multi-instance to make it super efficient, and we'll leave those options as is. Now, in tree mode, uh, let's have a look at the steps first. We have this set to three steps, and at every step, it splits off into two branches. So if we increase the steps... We're going to get another layer here. So step one, two, three, four. And at each step, we're getting two branches jutting off. But we can change that to three branches. And now we've got a much more kind of three-dimensional looking tree. That looks pretty cool. And um, we can go up to really high step levels, high branch levels. And very quickly, we're getting a shape that resembles a tree. You can see why this algorithm is named tree. Let's just put those steps down at the moment to four and branches down to two, just while we explore the settings. Now we're able to adjust the growth and the subsequent scales. So you can see, look, they're getting smaller as we go up the steps, but we'll leave those as default for this and the really powerful tools are animating our angle options so the angle open is set to 45 degrees by default but if we change this look zero it's not open at all and then those branches open out and we can cycle that all the way to 180 degrees where it's closed again at the base so we can get some cool animation effects by animating the angle open. The radial is really powerful. If we put this on zero, you can see that we have no radial angle at all. So it looks like there's only one kind of branch, doesn't it? But then when we animate this, boosh, it kind of folds out on itself. And that, um, when we have much more detail and more steps and branches, looks amazing. Look, let's put our steps up to six. Let's put our branches up to, say, four. And now if we animate our radial, we get this great kind of folding out from itself of all of our copies. That looks very, very cool indeed. Once we have one tree, we can create more copies of the same tree. Here, look, we've got number of copies by default set to one. If we put it on two, we're going to get almost a mirrored copy underneath. So we're getting something like that. We can put this on three, then four. And we've got this very equal looking four copied tree. And if we put it on six, we'll get that perfect um, equal copies of six trees excellent let's put that back down to one though for now so we've got a little bit more control and we are able to let's just put that radial onto full we are able to control the same angle settings but just at a per step level so let's say that we only wanted to adjust the angles here not for the rest of them well we can do that with levels so we're going to add a level this level Let's highlight it to see the settings. We want it to affect step level two, yes, which is here. And because you can see, look, it's all gone straight just at this point. And that's because we have angle options now just for this step level. And by default, they're set to zero. So if we open this a bit, you'll see it's bending just that bit. And then if we open the angle radial, Yes, and it's just animating it from that step level. The rest of these settings are being driven by our global angle settings, but we've isolated step two using this level. So that's pretty cool. But what we can do as well, we don't just have to affect the angle. We can dictate using levels how many branches there are on a per step basis. So let's say here we only want three not the four that we've got everywhere else. So all we need to do is change it from type 
to branch, from angle to branch, and say, look, we want a branch count of two at this um, step level two. And then you can see, look, yeah, we've got two branches here. Everywhere else, we've got four branches. So we can layer up these levels and get as many different effects as you want. So they are really, really powerful. Let's just delete that out. So we're back to our default. Now, finally, let's just um, make this bit more interesting by incorporating some other mesh tools. So we'll go to Insidium mesh tools and let's bring in an inset and what we're going to do is we're going to put the cube take it out of the fractal and put it in the inset and what the inset will do is if we go to the inset settings let's add the amount and we get this inset you see the inset growing in our uh, polygon let's do something like that we're going to hide the inner faces which gives us a bit of a kind of wireframe look we can add a bit of depth to this let's go to insidium mesh tools and we'll go to shell gen. Let's put our inset in the shell gen. Let's add some thickness. All right, something like that. And then we can put our shell gen in the fractal. And now we've got something that's looking very cool. And if we come to our fractal, obviously this is super efficient, so we can still animate this. Look, let's animate that radial. <laughs> And we get these really cool, trippy, intricate, fractal geometry animations. It's all procedural. We can add more detail. Look, let's add another step. Let's add more branches. And still getting really good viewport performance, even though we have created this incredibly detailed, high-poly fractal geometry.